How's it going, YouTube? Welcome to the confines of my basement. Got a friend down here. Not for long. Since I work pretty much, I don't work at a school district anymore, it's really hard for me to make videos about VRV troubleshooting because I can't really shoot video in the field because I, you know, get paid to work not to make videos. So the best I can do is bring some boards down here to my basement and I want to cover some basics of BRV troubleshooting and the first thing I want to cover is monitor mode. Now monitor mode is one of those items that once I got the grasp of it it's like the clouds were lifted and diagnosing what the issue was and where it was located just became apparent I mean, it was great. So. You've got your VRV3 and your VRV4 style boards. On your VRV3, you have monitor mode is more or less, you just press BS1 button one time. You don't hold it down, you just press it one time. This light will flash. Now I have to, you have to do this on the master unit and the way to know if it's the master unit on VRV3 is this light will be solid. On the sub one, this light will be blinking and on sub two, this light will be off. So when you look at the board, if this is solid, normally this is solid and if everything is not in error, this light will be on as well. If your unit is in error, both of these lights will be on. This light and this light. So you go to the master unit press the button one time. This light will light up. Then you press the BS2 button 14 times to find the latest error. So you press this 14 times, then your lights will light up. This is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So 14 would be One, two, four, eight, these three lights. Eight plus four is 12, plus two is 14. But you press 14 times. Then when you've got, the, after you've pressed it 14 times, you hit the BS3 button once. And then you're gonna read these four lights right along here. And they're gonna flash. They're gonna actually have, like let's say, this light and this light lights up. You ignore these three lights. So you go to your troubleshooting codes, and if you have a service manual, a VRV3 service manual, your codes are gonna look something like this. It's gonna show you. You see the first three lights? They don't care about that. We're looking for the last four. So we look down, fourth light, and the seventh light's lit up. So that's our first code. So we know it's a U. Then we hit BS2 one time. Then different lights are gonna light up. So let's say, let's say this light right here lights up. Number five. We look on here, HP5. that verifies it is a U4. Now U4 is gonna be pretty much as a communication fault. So let's, that's gonna be on pretty much across the whole system. Now let's pick one that's only gonna be located in one area. Let's say we press this 14 times, we hit our BS3, and the first lights that light up on the first time after BS3 is five, six, and seven. So you go over here and look, five, six, and seven on check one, it's gonna be an L error. Now we gotta find out which L it is. So we hit BS2. Then different lights will light up on those four lamps. Let's say this light right here, H4P, let's say it lights up. We look over here, H4P, it's an L8. So now we know we have an L8 error. Now let's say we've got a multi-module system. Where is it located? Well, then you hit BS2 once and twice 
and see what lights up then. That's check four. So you go to L8, and on your check four, you're gonna look for the last two lamps. You're gonna look to see if one's lit up, left or right, or if neither one's lit up. Say you've got a multi-module system. On a multi-module system, anyway, on a multi-module system, you wanna look at the bottom. On a, on a multi-system, if no lights are lit up, it's on the master side. If the right light is lit up, which would be H7P, it would be blinking, it'd be slave one or sub one. If the left one is blinking, which is H6P, this one here, it would be sub two or slave two. That gives you an idea of where the problem's located and where to start testing. It's gonna be an inverter, inverter compressor overamp. So that narrows it down to where you need to go and what you need to do to start your testing. Then you start testing. You start testing your inverter board, you check your compressor, you mag on it, you do all, of, all the things you should do that's in the service manual. It tells you how to do it step by step. Once you do that, then you can go ahead and like lock out that module so the other module will run and that'll get you by an emergency operation until you can make the repair. Now, on VRV4, it's a little bit different because here it's uh, press BS1 and you know go into monitor mode. And by the way, when you're done checking everything, you just press that and it goes back to normal. You know, after you lock out your compressor and all that good stuff. And I'll go over uh, monitor mode two in another video. That's gonna be my next video. So, but once you you know press that and it takes you back to wherever you were at, it takes you back home more or less. 14 gives you your latest error, 15 will give you the error bef before that, and 16 will give you the two previous errors before the current error. On VRV4, it's 17, 18, and 19. 17 being the latest, 18 being the previous, 19 being two previous. So, monitor mode on this cat right here, you have pretty much, you press this one time, when you do, a one will display here and a zero and a zero. Then you'll hit BS2, you can hold it down. You don't have to punch it every time. You can hold it down and it'll creep up and then just make sure you don't overshoot it. Go to 17. Once you get to 17, you hit BS3. Then your first, your first digit's gonna pop up. Let's say it's an L8. You'll have an L show up and you'll have the H show up right there. And then you hit BS2, and it'll give you the rest of your code, which could be a, a zero 01. It'll have like a dash zero 01. And then when you get done with that, after you find it, hit this, BS3, and then your 1 and zero 00 will appear again, like you started, and then you hit BS1, and it takes you out, and the display will go blank. Now, an E301, would happen to be, I can find all the error codes. All right, an E301, that means you have an error code, an E3 and the sub error code 01 means it's in your main unit. Now, in order to find the master and sub one and sub two on this, you hit, press that once, and you press that once. If a zero appears, it's the main. If a one appears, it's the sub. If a two appears, it's the sub two. And then when you're done, you can hit this back and it'll go back to blank. Find out you have, it's in your, uh, if it's an E301, then it's gonna be an E3 error code in your main unit. And it means like a high pressure switch to open. So you can check everything, what caused the high pressure switch and uh, see if it's good, see if you have a faulty high pressure switch, what have you. If you had an L8, which is the overcurrent as we stated before, you would have, it would be like L8 and then dash, and then your, your main would be like uh, O3, your sub one would be six, and your sub two would be seven. And then you have an overcurrent after your startup operation, and then you can go check your inverted, inverter circuit compressor, 
number one. If you have 11, 12, or 13, that means if you have 11, 12, or 13, that's main, sub, and sub two, that would mean your inverter number two in the main sub one or sub two has an L8. And on these, what's really nice is once you go into mode setting two, you can individually lock out just the compressor on a VRV4. You don't have to lock out the whole module. You can lock out just the one bad compressor. You lock it out, and then you you know if you have a two module system, that's four compressors. You're able to lock out one compressor, so you've still got 75% capacity instead of 50% capacity like you do on a VRV3. So to sum it up, VRV3, press once, press this 14 times to go into number 14 to check your latest error, press this once to get your first digit of these four here compared to your service manual chart. Press this to get your second digit, reference these four. Press this twice, reference these two to find out where your location is at, master, sub one, or sub two. On this one, you press this once, press this 17 times to get to your current error. Press this to get your first digit. Press the BS2. I want to make sure I'm telling you right, because I don't do a lot of VRV4, unfortunately. I do more. Yeah. Then press 2 to get your second your second digit code. And then press this to go back to 100, and then press that to exit. So that is a short synopsis of using monitor mode to help diagnose what your problem is and where your problem's at. I'm going to make another video later about monitor mode 2 on how to lock out compressors, how that, you know, it, it's just it's just a lot different than mode setting 1. Mode setting 2 is really good. Monitor mode, though, will get you your diagnostics to the right location, and it really will help you out, you know, once you know what it is and what, what module it's at, it'll pinpoint where you need to start looking. So I hope this video helps you out and thanks for watching.